let me start my talk with a quote from, I believe, Ariel Rubinstein. There is no concept in economic theory that doesn't have a counterexample. And the concept I'm going to introduce today is no exception. Okay, the title of my talk is One for All, All for One, Von Neumann, Wald, Rawls, and Pareto. I'm Ahmed Ismail from the Department of Political Economy at King's College London. I'd like to thank this opportunity to thank the organizers, anonymous referees, and the session chairs who put a lot of effort in organizing and making this conference available online. While listening, please keep in mind the following questions. Can the concept I'm going to introduce be applied to the research area you've been recently working on? What well-known applications can illustrate the concept better? Do you have any ideas for finding an efficient algorithm uh, for finding pure strategy solutions that I'm going to introduce today? Let me give you a little background of Maximin criterion. This is one of the few concepts I believe that has applications in many different seemingly unrelated fields, including economics, computer science, political philosophy, statistics, and so on and so forth. However, in games, Maximin criterion predictions are, are and tend to be very pessimistic, especially in non-zero sum games. As a definition, a maximum strategist maximizes a minimum utility irrespective of what his or her opponent does, even assuming that his or her opponent is guided by the desire to inflict a loss rather than to achieve a gain. Okay? So basically, even if you have to shoot in your leg to hurt your opponent a little bit, you have to do it according to the maximum criteria. Okay, in some sense. Early maximum models include Borel, uh, Milner's characterization, and the seminal work of Gilbert, Gilbert and Schmeider, the maximum expected utility, and Renu and Schleck's maximum model, as well as uh, there is huge ambiguity literature in maximum in strategic games, including Mainachi 2000. Let me give you a motivation why maximum criterion be implausible in non-zero sum games. The maximum strategy here is D because it guarantees one, whereas U guarantees only zero because a uh, column player may choose R. However, R is an implausible strategy. Right, R is strictly dominated. And if you remove R from the game, in some sense, we could say that UL should be actually uh, the solution in this game. Indeed, the unique Nash equilibrium is UL. And the concept I'm going to introduce soon single, singles out UL as the solution of this game, albeit for a different reason, okay? Let me give you a preview of the results in the paper. Firstly, I believe that uh, the optimum criterion is useful in explaining the direction of non-Nash deviations towards cooperation in non-cooperative games. Okay, I'll give you a few examples how it can explain. Uh, second, every game with compact strategy sets and continuous utility has an optimum point. So in particular, uh, for the existence of optimum points, uh, we don't require, for example, the convexity of strategy sets, okay? Three, when restricted to pure strategies, pure optimum point always exists in finite games. I especially like this uh, property because in, if you uh, work with mixed strategy equilibrium, it could be very tedious to calculate and computationally costly to find mixed strategy equilibria. Uh, and we know that pure strategy equilibria may not exist. So in that sense, uh, first we can try to find the pure optimum points if there is an efficient algorithm. That's one of the, I think, open questions. And, uh, and then maybe then once we find it, as a benchmark point, then we could try and compare and maybe find mixed strategy equilibria around this region, okay? The fourth point, the optimum criterion generalizes Nash equilibrium in n-person constant sum games. So in every n-person constant sum game, 
every Nash equilibrium is an optimum point. Five, uh, it coincides with world's maximum criterion in games against nature. In other words, in zero-sum games, optimum is equivalent to the Nash equilibrium or maximum strategies. Okay. In general equilibrium, uh, competitive equilibrium always satisfies the optimum, cri optimum criterion. And in cooperative games, optimum criterion is equivalent to the core whenever core exists, but it exists even if the core is empty. So core might be empty as you know, and I'll give you an example when this is the case, when optimum produces a prediction, okay? Here is the definition in non-cooperative games. An agreement P, which is a strategy profile, is said to satisfy the optimum criterion if it solves for every I the following multi-objective maximization problem. The intuition behind this definition is as follows. If an agreement or a strategy profile is a Nash equilibrium, then it means that there is no unilateral profitable deviation. It's a self-enforcing agreement. But if it is not a Nash equilibrium, it means that there will be someone who can deviate from the agreement. And, it, and I'm asking, what is my minimal payoff if a player or players unilaterally profitably deviate from an agreement? This is the infimum operator uh, that captures this idea. What is your minimal utility given that others deviate from the agreement unilaterally and profitably, okay? Bi is the better response correspondence here, and B minus I is defined as follows. In general, different constraints may be incorporated into this maximum operator. For example, just like in the gilboa schmeidler maximum model, different constraints C can rationalize different behavior in decision theory. Here, different constraints B may rationalize different strategic behavior. One can incorporate, for example, best response correspondence, which I considered before, or uh, one can say that the const there is no constraint, actually, the players may deviate to any feasible strategy, doesn't have to be profitable deviation. In this case, every optimum point collapses into a strategy profile of maximum strategies in n-person games, okay? One might break down this definition into two and say that equivalently, P is an optimum if it's Pareto optimal with respect to the uh, value function, which calculates the minimal payoffs from the agreements under rational deviations. Earlier, I called uh, P is a maximum equilibrium if P is either optimum or it satisfies this similar maximization problem, okay? Let me give you an illustrative example. Let's focus on the game over here. The unique Nash equilibrium is CC, whereas the unique optimum point is AA, and the reason is as follows. Let's suppose that we agreed on playing AA, however, we make our decisions in separate cubicles independently. Then I know that you might deviate to B, that you might deviate to B and get a payoff of 105. That's why it's not a Nash equilibrium. There is a unilateral profitable deviation. However, my payoff, even if you deviate, my payoff, even if you deviate over here, is 100. And I can rule out, and I do rule out, a deviation C from this agreement because it means that you have to shoot yourself in the leg just to be able to hurt me, but that hurts you as well, okay? So I'm ruling out this. Therefore, the minimal payoff associated with the agreement AA is 100 for the row player because the game is symmetric. This is the same for the column player as well. Now let's focus on another profile, which is BB, which looks also good. Okay, however, the opponent in this case, let me put it here, the opponent in this case might deviate to C, which is a profitable deviation, in which case my payoff as a role player would decrease to zero. 
That's why the worst case payoffs or the minimum payoffs when B agreement BB is considered is zero zero for both players. CC is a Nash equilibrium, is a self-enforcing agreement. Therefore, its minimal payoffs is equivalent to its payoff factor. It's over here. And then optimum point definition says that consider the Pareto optimal boundary of these minimal payoffs games, which is it's the unique, there's a unique Pareto dominant strategy profile, which is AA. So AA is the unique optimum point in the original game. Okay. The optimum criterion is also useful in explaining cooperation in non-cooperative games, including the finitely repeated prisoner's dilemma, the centipede game, traveler's dilemma, and finitely repeated public goods game. Let me just give you one example. Cooperation has been studied extensively in the finitely repeated prisoner's dilemma, and one of the main findings is that cooperative strategies has been quite successful. Let's take the tit for tat strategy which has been successful in computer tournaments as well as experimental settings. Tit for tat strategy generally satisfies the optimum criterion and the reason is as follows. Suppose that we agree to play tit for tat strategy. Yes, you have a profitable deviation from it, but my minimal payoff, even if you deviate from it, is quite high and is generally much, much greater than the subgame perfect equilibrium payoff in which you have to defect every round. That's why I'm willing to agree on tit for tat strategy for profile. And actually, even if you take advantage of me, my minimum payoff is still quite high and I could be fine with it. In a similar fashion, the optimum criterion explains cooperative behavior in centipede game. Whereas in zero sum centipede games, the optimum criterion predictions are exactly equivalent to Nash equilibrium predictions, which prescribes to stop in the first round. Whereas in increasing some centipede games, the optimum criterion is to cooperate. And this explains the convergence of behavior towards cooperation in increasing some centipede games, whereas towards selfish behavior in zero sum centipede games. Okay. So we can define the optimum criterion in cooperative games as well for those who are interested. I just put the definition over here, who will watch later, you can have a look at the definition. For now, I will just give you the intuition behind the definition. The intuition is actually is the same as the intuition in non-cooperative games. Let's take a cooperative game in characteristic function. For every feasible payoff factor, I calculate my minimal payoff if individual players or coalitions rationally deviate. And I call this the value of the payoff vector. And similarly, I try to optimize the value of the uh, payoff vector. So in a cooperative game, a payoff vector is called the optimum point if you cannot increase someone's minimal payoffs without decreasing someone else's minimal payoffs. Okay, so that is the idea. Let me give you one example that illustrates this definition. Here is a cooperative game in which coalition one receives 35, two receives 30 and so on, and the grand coalition receives 110. The core is empty in this cooperative game and the Shapley value is about 44, 36 and 29 and the Nicolaeolus is 46, 36, and 26. Whereas the optimum points, the set of optimum points is defined as follows. Player one receives 40, player two and player three receive 70, and player two and three gets at least their individual rational payoff. Okay, so the intuition behind the solution is as follows. Notice that player one receives 40 under the optimum criterion, which is strictly less than player one's payoff under the Shapley value as well as the Nicolaeolus. Okay, however, notice that player two and three under the Shapley value as well as the Nicolaeolus, they receive less than 70. 
So they have incentives to deviate from the both Shapley value and the Nikola Olus. And in, in case they deviate, player one's utility is 35. Okay, so the optimum value of this payoff allocation of Shapley value as well as the Nucleolus is 35. Whereas under the optimum point, player two and player three has no incent incentives to deviate from this payoff allocation. And therefore player one can safely enjoy the minimum payoff of 40. If we increase the payoff of the grand coalition from 110 to 120, then both the core and the unique optimum point and the unique nucleolus, they all coincide. Okay. Thanks for listening. Uh, let me remind you the questions and uh, maybe you can uh, send me your questions later or if you have comments, please feel free to uh, let me know. Can the concept, the optimum concept, be applied to the research area that you've been working recently? What well-known applications do you think can illustrate this concept better? And did you come up with any ideas or do you have any ideas for efficiently computing the pure or mixed strategy optimum points in non-cooperative or cooperative games? Thank you for listening.